Vamos, Diego. Digo. Tofimo, vámonos. All right, gentlemen, you've both been given the pre-fight rules. I want to see a clean fight. I want to see a professional fight here. Uh, keep your uh, guards up. Protect yourselves at all times. Most importantly, obey my commands. Touch gloves and step back. Lopez was so confident when we met with him yesterday. At one point, he says that Diego is not going past two rounds. And he said, I am going to hurt him, and I am going to hurt him badly. Right there. In great contrast to the exuberant black back flipping guy that we Ready. are used to seeing, he really does want to hurt him. There's something, there's a mean, nasty transformation that he undergoes right before a fight. Diego Magdaleno, the southpaw, the two time world title challenger, fought for the title at junior lightweight against Martinez in April of 2013, lost a 12 round split decision in Macau, China. And then October 2015 against then 28 no Terry Flanagan. He was TKO'd in the second round when he stepped up and fought for the WBO lightweight belt. And the distinct impression we got yesterday, he came to tears in the interview room. It was a guy who's still coming to terms with that loss to Terry Flanagan in England. And a lot of the fork in the road moments in his career where he has regret. You know, we had two fighters that broke down in tears during our production meetings yesterday. One, you had the great sense it was because he understood what he was about to experience, and that was Richard Comey, who had the second round TKO to open up the night on ESPN and earn the IBF lightweight world championship. He is now lined up to fight Vasily Lomachenko. It was very different, the emotional response from Diego Magdalena. Yes, it was. You know, he was happy to be in this moment once again. You know, he felt abandoned. After he lost, went over there to England and lost lost the title, the second title opportunity. And, you know, he was fighting in Mexico and he said he had to find coaches to help him out, you know, just to, you know, help him in his fights, in his fights. And also, he's just happy just to be back to get another opportunity on a top-ranked card, fighting against a good opponent. It's not a good opponent. We talk about Tiafimo as if he were a prospect. The reality is that he's a contender, and like Richard Comey, he has his sights on Vasily Lomachenko. He probably has another year in this division. The sights is a target and a timetable before the end of the year. Well, this fight is designed for Magdaleno to give Lopez some problems being the southpaw and also the experience. So they need to see Tilefimo Lopez late in the fight. Mason Menard had experience too. Didn't he? Yeah, they understand. I mean, they understand, but you know, Mason Menard was supposed to give him some rounds, but he didn't. But this fight is designed for Magdaleno to give Lopez some rounds. You gotta see your fighter late. See how he reacts under pressure. Well, Lopez has had success with that right hand to the body here in round number one against Magdalena. See him leaning left. Keeping left. He wants that right hand, doesn't he? Absolutely. That's the right hand killer. There it is, right down the middle. Oh, good right hand from Lopez. Look at this attack at the end of round one. As Diego shakes his head right in his face, but he got to him. That's all you got. Speaking of guys who can get to an opponent, arguably the pound for pound best in the world is here. Bud Crawford running routes downfield outside the star. As he comes up with the catch there, now sitting ringside. I mean, there is nobody who gets ringside earlier for a fight night than Bud Crawford. He's been here since mid afternoon, taking in absolutely everything, put out his Super Bowl prediction. But someday, wouldn't you love to see Bud in the ring with that guy? Dallas's own Errol Spence will be going up against Garcia this spring. The other welterweight champion. You had him right there. You They've had, had a few him. interactions in yes, the they They've been close, but I want to see them get, their, get in the ring and settle. I don't Check think Bud would have go. a problem with that at all. I don't think so at all. But you know, the business he circumstances of boxing is Wait up. It's a little difficult. Nope. Fighters want to fight, they should. I agree with you. And this is a guy coming out of that red corner wearing the Fuck. Dallas Cowboys colors with the Vince Lombardi trophy painted on his trunks, who always wants to fight. That is the 11-0 Tiafimo Lopez, who tagged 
Diego Magdalena at the end of round one. I thought he was a college football fan. Well, he went from Heisman night <laughs> to now down here in the NFL. He knows how to play to his audience, Mark. Yes, he does. And Lopez looking very sharp right now. He has not a whole lot to worry about. Magdaleno is not a big, big puncher. Well, this is Did the second. The there. This is the second round, and Tiafimo Senior, who is not right, only a back. trainer but quite frequently his son's mouthpiece, has assured us this is football season, it's Super Bowl season, guarantee season. Told us that this fight would not go beyond the second round. That was his guarantee. See that viper-like strike with the counter right hand. Tiafimo has hand speed, he has power, he has dynamic athleticism, and he has, oh, what a big right uppercut. Lopez lands flush. This kid is the real deal. He really is, he isn't is he? Sharp. Right hand to the body from Lopez. Now he takes an angle, comes back, lands the left hand, hands down at the hips, having fun with it, loaded with confidence. Go fight, no talk. This against a 31-win veteran who has fought twice for a title. Magdaleno is not going to win this with his mouth. No, he's not going to win it with his mouth. And he needs to box a little bit more. What he's doing is he's sitting directly in front of Lopez. And Lopez is just sneaking in with some sharp punches to the body and to the head. He's switching up his attack, confusing Magdaleno. Just time to right hand. There's an uppercut. There's a combination. And more and more from Lopez. Magdaleno is seriously hurt. The body work. The body work is setting up everything up top. Left hook came after the uppercut. Sweeping right hand. Lopez in complete control. Finding his rhythm offensively. Short right hand to the body. Follows it up with a right hand upstairs. Tracking in. Taking small steps. Now quartering him. Right hand to the middle of the body. Short right hand inside. Oh, look at this from Lopez. And you can see blood on the bridge of the nose of Magdaleno. P. Lopez setting up to the body, looking for something over the top of Magdaleno. You can see the blood streaming down that split right on the nose. Magdaleno survives. It's just because Tiafimo wants to have something to argue about with his dad. <laughs> They're pretty good at that. Here you're going to see Lopez right there. Nice catch and shoot right up the middle. You see Magdaleno lean forward just a little bit. Lopez recognizing that, but it was a nice little catch and shoot. The punch came from Magdaleno. He blocked it and came up right up the middle with the short uppercut. Beautiful shot. My goodness, this kid is patient. This kid is calm. He has extreme punching power, and he has speed and timing. Second out, he is go. dynamic. Second out. Out of the we asked his dad a couple fights ago where to get that catch and shoot from. He said Bruce Lee. Huh. <laughs> you need to get out of the ring. Well, it has been a thrill to watch each and every step of this young career. And dynamic so far tonight. There are CompuBox numbers, the punches in the last round. 24 of 62. Magdaleno only landed three. Tia Fimmel was born in Brooklyn, by the way. Likes to identify with Brooklyn. He grew up in Florida and now Vegas. Recently moved back to Brooklyn to Bushwick with his fiance to get away from it all. He's the only guy who went to Bushwick for a break. Think about that. <laughs> wow. Fiance Cynthia made the trip down here. They were getting married in August 2020. And you know, it's interesting because in understanding the relationship of father and son with Teofimo Sr., you would think there may be a certain reaction to anybody who could take his affection and attention. And dad says, listen, I think Cynthia is absolutely great in terms of the role she plays with 
a fighter who's trying to go to the next level. He says he's more focused, he gets stronger fight after fight with their relationship being in such a good place now with the engagement. I just love what I'm seeing from Lopez. I mean, he's changing levels. He's bringing the eyes down to Magdaleno. You know, when he's dropping and changing levels, and then he's sneaking up with a nice overhand right. Nice up jab right there. He's doing a lot of creative things in there. Well, a guy with only 10 something fights. My goodness. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of Lopez? Delfimo Sr. says, just keep jabbing, setting up that overhand right. And Ismael Salas in the corner of Magdaleno telegraphed everything that Teofimo was going to do, and he still couldn't get away from it. Took an awkward angle back that time, and Magdaleno fobbled him with a left hand. One of the things you can see, look at his, his frame. For 21 years old, he's not going to hold on to lightweight no. forever. He'll go to 140, they say, a year from now. This is the last year at 135 pounds, a division that they feel they can win a title in. Now pause and think about what I just said. It's a division that has Vasily Lomachenko owning two belts and lined up to get a third, depending on the outcome of what happens against Komei on April 12th. I mean, it, it, it's not it's not premature to have that that kind of talk. It's not without precedent. De La Hoya and Mayweather won titles at, at 21. Miguel Cotto at 23. Vasily Lomachenko was not, or the likes of that kind of fighter, though, wasn't in the division, right? Do you think it's realistic that you can make that statement here at this age with this amount of fights, knowing who's in the division? Vasily Lomachenko wants guys with belts. The question is, will Tiafimo have a belt by the, you know, by the end of the year? Great combination to the body. Listen, he is undoubtedly of world championship status. Hey, get rid of that label right there. Beautiful, beautiful round. Beautiful round. It Keep on touching him, bro. It? And we hope to have many in our main event. Elader Alvarez and that guy, Sergey Kovalev, in the rematch of the WBO light heavyweight world title. Buddy McGirt is making the final preparations here. Lacing up those gloves. The new trainer of Kovalev, he feels that he's better conditioned and in a better place. And there is Alvarez, now at 24 and 0, originally from Colombia, lives in fights out of Montreal. The new champ with a lot of confidence. Will it be a continuation of what we saw at the end Check of round Let's number go. one? Or Let's will go. it look the way it did Hello, early on in that first fight when Kovalev was ahead on the scorecards and was boxing and then got him with a right hand in the fourth round? Box. Lopez is wearing him down to the body and to the head. You just see the physicality of Lopez, 21 years old. Look at the big shoulders he has, punching power and the speed behind it, and the great technique as well. I think it's just a matter of time he's going to land the right punch and Mag put in the night. Magdaleno worked with Jose Pedraza to get him ready for Lomachenko. He worked with Jorge Linares to get him ready for Lomachenko. I wonder if, in effect, he is now working with Teofimo Lopez to get him eventually ready for Lomachenko. I'm surprised, quite frankly, he's hung on this moment. See, every time Magdaleno shoots a jab, you see him lean a little bit forward. Lopez recognized that, and you see him coming right up the middle. I'm waiting on Lopez to follow up with the left hook. Comes with a straight right that time, through the uppercut last time we saw it. Magdaleno showing a really good chin just for. Couple up jabs, and then the one-two off of it. That's exactly where Lopez needs to go. He needs to go down Break, to the body. Step back, step back. You heard him, him in a, about a round ago to the body. And if he focuses attention down there, then it's going to set up everything up top. Mm. 
Nice shot right there. Watch your heads. By Magdaleno sneaking a nice little Best short shot uppercut. Side. Yeah, nice uppercut. Right after the jab of Lopez. And I think it took Lopez off. Magdaleno's best round of the fight so far. Break, step back. Occasionally, step back. Break. Lopez a step straight back and allow Magdaleno to land a straight left. But he doesn't feel threatened because Magdaleno doesn't have a whole lot of power. And the, one of the interesting things that I see from Lopez is he's moving right a lot. And he's having success. And, and a lot of times, guys are fighting for position to get their foot outside the left-handed fighter. Circling right against the southpaw, heading right towards that left hand. He seems he wants to battle the left hand. Good combination here to close out that round, but it was a better round for Magdaleno. Let's look at some of the success with the right uppercut from Lopez, Timmy. This beautiful work right by Lopez. Look at that catch. Then shoot right up the middle. You get your opponent leaning a little bit forward. There it is again. Beautiful job. You got to be relaxed to be able to do those things. You know, and you got to practice it in the gym. And I hear that this young man works extremely hard in the gym. And he works numerous amount of drills to be able to perfect that uppercut right there. And sometimes he also will turn it into a right hand as well. Okay? What a difference in corners. Relax, dad confident. Son wanting to get off to school, and then you see this guy, Diego Magdaleno, as they've been dealing with that cut. On the nose, the swelling of the face, and hoping for a change. I always get the impression that Teofimo is also concerned with style points. Not just doing it, but how he does it. In that respect, especially with the interplay with his father, the kind of you know, I love you. I'm, I'm mad at you. Stuff reminds me of Pete Maravich. How so? Well, there's this insistence on perfection, and I and I also think, and this is not peculiar to to the Lopez's, but I think that he is a a creature of his father's am, ambition, his vision. It's a grandiose one. It's a great one. And I think the kid feels pressure. Good shot right there, a little right hook. Lopez carrying his left hand low. Magdalena was able to sneak, sneak a little left hook. Magdalena right went through a checklist of defensive flaws with us yesterday when he was sizing up Lopez. As he opens up, says sometimes he'll admire his work a little bit, sit there, pull back a little bit, try to be Floyd Mayweather with that shoulder roll and that lean off. But you can get on top of him, you can close the gap, was the thought of Diego. That's not the case here. Nope. Right now it's target practice, and every time Lopez let his hands go, he's hitting something on Magdaleno. He was a much more aggressive bench than a Floyd Mayweather. Oh, undoubtedly. He really wants to inflict great harm. Undoubtedly so. <laughs> right now Lopez trying really hard, looking for the knockout, trying to put a series of punches together to maybe discourage Magdaleno. And Magdaleno's one tough cookie. The left hand right to that belt line from Diego. Magdaleno's shown me something surviving this far from Lopez. Instead of one punch, I'd like to Did you just four. see that? Yeah, I saw it. He just did a spin with a back punch and then looked over this way and winked at us. My point about style points. But now Whitaker, it's, perform it's performance art for him. A behind the back punch off of the spin, looks over and winks. And you know he was waiting for that. No doubt. <laughs> That's a Pistol Pete move. It's just violent.
Well, Magdaleno's trying. He's just outgunned. You know, the younger Lopez. Great timing. Controlling distance on the outside. Getting out. Coming and attacking at the right moments in the right time. He had a little sizzle to that fifth round, didn't he? Let's check in with the guys. All right, Tess joined by Max and Dre. Dre Lopez, he's so under control, he's dominating this fight. Yeah, Lopez is doing what he's supposed to do. Magdaleno is a veteran of the sport. Uh, he's been around, but he's not really here to, to beat Lopez. No one thinks he's going to beat Lopez, but he's supposed to give Lopez some work, especially if Teofimo and his father are talking about fighting the likes of Lomachenko at the end of this year. I know they like knockout. I know that's what everybody's bragging about when they talk about Teofimo, but I know that he needs the rounds. There's no substitute for good rounds against a veteran like Lopez is getting right now. With rare exception, the elite fighters that the fans want to see and know are really the best are fast, twitchy guys. And then if they're aggressive to boot and they can punch, Second those out. are the guys. Second out. This is one of those Let's fast, go. twitchy, aggressive punchers that fans love to see. The sky's the limit. Tess, it's been a superstar performance with a lot of star power. Yep, that scouting report that Max just gave is dead on. And then there's this. This is what happened moments ago behind the back from Lopez. <laughs> Watch it again. It ain't funny if you're Magdaleno. No, it's not funny, but it's, it's something that, you know, <laughs> I've seen some of the greats do. Penel Whitaker used to do that often. I do like that up jab, too. It's beautiful. I mean, it splits right between the guards of Magdaleno. Remember Kovalev and Alvarez is still set to come your way. So many questions to be answered in that fight. Which version of Kovalev do we get? I will tell you this. We were, I was very surprised when we met with him yesterday where he was and how he responded. That was not the guy I thought we were going to meet with. All the distractions outside the ring, all the doubts coming off of the seventh round knockout. This is a guy that would cut weight, would spend time in the sauna the day before a fight. He was having lunch, breakfast, meeting with us, relaxed. He did not want Andre Ward in the interview room. I think that, that bears mention. It, it does, but if I'm managing Kovalev, and I think the mental side coming off such a devastating knockout to be sitting opposite the table of the guy who turns your career. I can understand where you don't want your fighter necessarily experiencing that 24 hours before. I didn't take it as anything. Hey, we don't want Andre to know this, know that, have any information. It's the it's managing the psyche of yeah, your fighter. Absolutely. And the funny thing is because we know what Andre did to him. We asked Andre the same question. What he do? And he said, hey, I would have done the same thing. I agree. It's also to my mind an admission in some respect of vulnerability as Max put forth to Andre earlier tonight when they had that conversation as to the role that Andre Ward played in the career of Kovalev. We will see now if Kovalev continues on and can get the belt back or is Alvarez somebody who we look at as a pound for pound elite and king of the 175s. A division that is shaping up to be very special this year and beyond. Tim, we saw Magdaleno become very emotional yesterday. Yeah. Doesn't look like he's going to win the fight. No. What does he get out of this? That. That's what he gets. He just crumbled. Six, siete, ocho. Sigan bien. ¿Cómo se siente? Quiere seguir. Let's go. He says, come on, baby. Only a couple seconds left. Another big right hand comes in as the bell rings, so Magdalena will survive what was a brutal final second beatdown of round number six. He is bloody dame, and battered. Dame, dame. La cabeza. Sí, dame, dame la. Trans Vamos, mi Diego. Sit down. Come on, you gotta wake up. No te puedes quedar dormido. You can't okay? stay asleep. Mueve la cabeza. Move Mueve la cabeza que tú lo tienes, men. Come on, man. Confía, confía en ti. You gotta trust in yourself. Yeah, and, and, yeah, it's good, sir. It's good. Mueve la cabeza, quédate abajo y chingatelo abajo. Get him downstairs. You're gonna see the start. 
Going down to the body with the right hand. Brought the eyes down of Magdaleno. Okay. Leaning forward just a little bit and then sweeps with the left hook right on the money. There it is again. Magdaleno was actually trying to land his right hook. Right in the middle. Head standing still. Beautiful shot by Lopez. Honestly, I don't know why this fight is continuing. Uh, Magdaleno is getting Ask smell every, every hard shot that Lopez is throwing. He doesn't have a punch to, you know, to put himself back uh, in this fight. He's going to take a beating if they don't stop this match. Ask that smell a salad. right hand. This thing's going to end in no time. Lopez is all over him. You are about to see a finish here from Tiafimo unless Diego can steady himself. Diego keeps calling him on. There's another left hook. Somebody needs to throw in the towel right now. He is absorbing huge blows. Another right uppercut comes in. Diego says he wants more, but why? It's on Ismail Salas to save his fighter from himself. Yes. Throw in the towel. Yes, it is. His Recognize the is situation. Swollen. Red nose is bloodied. That was as devastating a knockout as you will see. Five, six, seven, eight. Backflip to celebrate, but get Magdaleno medical attention right now. He took an absolute beating. Lopez said he was going to hurt him. He hurt him badly. And let me tell you, Jesse Magdaleno, the brother, the pro boxer, is being restrained from coming after Lopez right now. And I agree with what you guys were saying. That didn't need to happen. Jesse may want to direct his attention at his brother's corner for not throwing in the towel. The situation was abundantly clear. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Against one of the most dynamic young power punchers in the game. He took that kind of beating and then was finished with a grand slam single punch. And we heard yesterday from Magdalena how much he trusted in his trainers. And we, we heard in the corner, you're falling asleep, you're, you're sleeping on me. No, he wasn't. He was outclassed. He was yes, outgunned. Yes, he was. And it's on the trainer to recognize that. And he's hurt. He is hurt. He will be affected by this for the rest of his life, taking that much punishment. Watch this finish by Lopez. You know, seven round fatigue is definitely setting in. Lopez just coming around the guard, leading with a, a lead left hook and landed on Magdaleno. Magdaleno had no clue what was going on. He took a beating. He was for calling for, for it, fight. Tim, and it's not a damn movie. The first left hook was to the temple. Right to the that temple. That could have ended the fight. The second left hook, it is just brutal. This punch right here. The head snap and then down to the canvas, not even breaking his fall. Does not break his fall. That is two straight fights now where Tiafimo Lopez has hit a man so hard that they fall to the ground without supporting without themselves. Without supporting themselves, absolutely. Sensational punching power from Lopez. Lopez, as he has time and again, Fortnite celebration. And then the home run swing right over his beaten opponent. And that is most likely what they took offense to in the corner I of Magdaleno. Really, really didn't need that. Let's make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, eight seconds in round number seven. 
He is the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. And now the unified NABF, NABA, and USBA lightweight champion, Teofimo Lopez. You can see the corner of Magdalena still being restrained, trying to get to Lopez to let him know how they felt about that.